Good morning, everybody. Silas back again today. Ooh, that sun's bright. I did not expect that. Dang, let me get out of that. Okay, well, I'm actually glad that sun interrupted me because as soon as that happened, my phone rang and my entire schedule got changed for today. The original plan was is I was gonna crush cars here all morning long, and then this afternoon, I've gotta go pick up an old car. Uh, supposedly, there's a bunch of other cars there as well. It's kind of like a semi-abandoned junkyard way out in western Kansas. Uh, I don't know for sure what's there yet, and that's still gonna happen. I'll be doing that later. But first, this morning, I've got to go look at a bunch of other old cars. I'm not sure what all's there, so I guess I'll just take my camera with me. We'll walk around them. I'm not gonna get any of those today. We're just gonna probably go through and uh, get them marked with paint that way we know which ones go and which ones don't then after that i don't know if i'm going to have time to do it as well but maybe i'm going to go look at some more old stuff so that being said as soon as my dad gets here we're going to go grab something to eat and then we're going to go check out those old cars And I am on the road again. I'm off on my next adventure, and I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> with inflation and the price of diesel, things like that, these adventures I go on have been a little bit expensive. So a couple months ago, a friend of mine was talking to me, and he said, hey, you should check out this app. It's called Upside. So I checked it out, and it was pretty cool. You don't have to spend any money. All I had to do was just check the app and see which gas stations were offering a, a cashback reward. And so I used the app for about a month, and then out of nowhere, Upside actually emails me and they said, hey, we would like to sponsor your YouTube channel. So I emailed them back and I said, you bet. I actually love Upside. I use it all the time. I'd be happy to. And so the sponsor of today's video is Upside. I've got to run out of town and do something real quick. And I'm sitting at about a half a tank. So I checked the app and it looks like Love's is nine cents a gallon cash back. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is to download the Upside app. Be sure to use the code Adventure so you can get an extra 25 cents a gallon cash back on your first purchase. And right now it's showing me all the different places. Well, it sees that I'm actually at Lowe's right now. But let's say I wasn't here and I was somewhere else. You can click on the map and the map will show you all the different places that are offering different cash back rewards. For example, the other day I was in Pratt. So I searched in Pratt and there was a Casey's there. And at that point in time, it was 11 cents a gallon cash back. And so what I'm gonna do is I've already got the offer ready to go. I'm gonna hit claim offer. Okay, I'm back out of the wind. It is crazy out there right now. But anyway, when you get back, you just hit I've paid and boom, you're done. Within two to four days, you'll have your cash back. Now, the way I do it is I have it put into my PayPal account because I use my PayPal account all the time. But you can have it put straight into your bank account. You can get an e-commerce gift card like Amazon or others. Super simple. There's lots of options. So whatever works for you. When you compare the Upside app to other cash back reward programs, uh, you actually can get up to three times as much cash back with Upside as you can those others. Now, what I spend mine on, you guys know, I live on gas station food when I'm out traveling. So uh, 
I'm gonna eat a fajita steak and cheese taco today. And so it's free money, super simple to use. You're gonna spend the money anyway, and not only can you save money on fuel, but you can save money on groceries at certain grocery stores, uh, certain restaurants will give cash back. So definitely check it out, download the Upside app, and use my code ADVENTURE to get 25 cents a gallon extra cash back on your first purchase. That being said, I'm gonna get back to the adventure. I actually, we ended up having time to go out there and look at that second place. There's nothing really cool there. There's an old 82 GMC van, panel van, but uh, he's not sure if he wants to sell that yet or not. I made him a pretty good offer on it. We'll see what he says. But there's bunches of iron and just scrap metal laying around. A bunch of air conditioners and reefer units, things like that. It's all just scrap. We just have to go in there and kind of sort it, throw the scrap in the dumpster and haul the uh, air conditioners and stuff like that home. That one little kitten was determined to come home. We actually bought a tractor and a car out there here a while back and that kitten was there then. It was a lot smaller back then and it was determined to go with us then. He said we could have it, but I don't really want any more pets. But I'm back here at the yard for just a minute. I'm gonna check on Sean, see how he's doing, see if he's getting these parts off these cars. He's going to a big swap meet out in California and uh, so he's getting a few valuable parts off of some of these real quick. And then after that, I guess my dad's gonna go with me, so I'll have to go uh, get something to eat for lunch, go out and hook up to the trailer, and hit the road. The car I'm going after is actually very similar to this one here. I don't know why I need another one. I think this is a 68 though, if I remember right. Yeah, this is a 68. The one I'm going after is a 69. Different color, but basically the same body style. Well, I'm not sure where Sean's at. This is one of the cars. He's gonna pull the uh, these little corner guards off of this car here. Those are worth a ton of money. And this is an old two-door hardtop car, but it is very rough. A tree fell on the roof. It's all smashed, so it's not fixable. But uh, those are a very valuable piece. So he's going to pop those off of there. This one's in a lot better condition on this side. Then if he has time, he's going to pull some more parts off of this car. But yeah, this, this roof is toast, and the car is pretty rough, but it has a ton of good parts on it. It's got some good doors, good rear fenders, uh, a workable trunk lid. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is a fairly rare piece, so somebody could work with that. It's a power glide car. The power glide's gone, but it does have the rear end under it still, so he may work on pulling that out of there. He just kind of depends on how much time he has. Then this old Pontiac, he's going to pull these shark fin or check mark pieces, whatever you call these. These will actually bolt right onto a Chevy of this same body style and kind of fancies them up a little bit, and I guess that's a pretty popular swap right now. We have a two-door hardtop, one of these on the other side, and it's got that as well, but you have to pull all the trim off of those because these here, the way the chrome all separates and everything on a Chevy and a Pontiac is a little bit different on the two doors. But if you save the whole piece that wraps around, you can interchange them. Here's another old Power Glide car. One of these days I need to take you guys in here and show you all these cars. You've never seen most of these back here. Here's another one of my old crew cab Dodges. Here's a Studebaker wagon that has the roof that slides forward and the back of it turns it into a pickup. Pretty cool piece. Finally found him. He's out here working on this old two-door sedan. Somebody started making a chop top out of it, but luckily they didn't just throw all the chrome away. We found most of the chrome. Some of it's four-door, uh, well, fit on a four-door, I mean, right there, but a lot of this is two-door only stuff. Bunch of window trim up there, the seat, and then the trunk is clear full of good stuff as well. All sorts of goodies. Here's the two-door hardtop Pontiac. Bud Hurt, Hurt Hurtling, Belleville, Kansas. He was actually a Pontiac dealer. Check out that emblem. That is sweet. That's one there that I'll probably save for my personal collection. But yeah, these here, the way this wraps around, Chevy won't interchange unless you do it all. So, I'll we'll have to get it all. But luckily, it's already all off laying in the trunk. And last but not least, he's gonna grab some parts off of this old 60 flat top. I tried to sell this car when I got it. It was a big block car, but nobody was really interested. I sold the steering column out of it a while back, but the uh, grill, the steering wheel, all that's just laying inside it, so that's easy pickings. So he's going to grab all that. And with that, I am done here, so I guess we're going to jump in the truck, go get the trailer. We're going to hit the road. There it is. Drove all the way out here to rescue this piece of junk. 1969 Thunderbird. There's not a whole lot here. 
but you guys know if you watch my channel regularly you guys know i like these cars and i've got kind of an idea for this one here it's kind of a crazy idea but i think it'll be a neat one i'll have to find a hood for it but that ain't that big of a deal yeah it's got a lot of good parts on it still got a nine inch rear end it's got taillights in it they're a little cracked up but they'll work, work for a wall hanger so yeah it's got some neat stuff on it and the top isn't that rusty it's got a little bit in it but for a bird that ain't too bad he's got a bunch of other stuff out here as well it's not technically abandoned it's just semi abandoned I mean it does it is owned by somebody but at the same time it's just been kind of left out here in the field for all these years I'm not sure what his plans are for the rest of the stuff I do have permission to be out here the neighbor watches this place like a hawk I'm gonna see what this thing is this is kind of neat not much of it left but still kind of neat I can't even tell what it is this is a Ford yeah it's a Ford I don't know what year this is if you know what year this is let me know old axle old pinno there's an old combine out there in the field old Massey Harris Wide open ranges out here in western Kansas. Nothing for as far as you can see. Bunch of old farm trucks. There's an old crew cab. Looks like a early 90s crew cab, 92 to 97 body style. One ton even. Trailer, an old gleaner. Oh, that one runs on propane too. See, I went to that auction in South Hutch and I bought that propane combine and I had never seen one before and now I see another one. Old farm equipment. Nothing spectacular up here, except for I saw this nose sitting here, so I'm going to ask him if he wants to sell that real quick. I thought that was a pinto, but this is a bobcat. I haven't seen a bobcat in a lot of years. We bought a bobcat wagon. It was like this, but it was a wagon on the back of it years ago that ran and drove. We thought it was kind of neat, but I think we ended up crushing it. Back in the day, we crushed everything, so people give me a hard time for what I crush now, but well, you ain't seen nothing unless you see the old us, the way we used to do it. But yeah, all I bought so far anyway, unless he sells me that front clip, is this car here. So I guess I'll get my chains out and everything and get it loaded up. there we go we are loaded up he sold me the front clip he wanted 200 I talked him down to 150 on it it's kind of rusty it's missing the headlight rings and the hood's gone but I can still do something with that for my wall art so I got it all strapped down strapped to the car cars loaded up chained down good got a bungee on the trunk lid and a wire so should be good to go good looking load right there while we were loading it though I noticed there's an old car down here in the ravine so I thought I'd go check that out real quick can't quite tell what it is looks like it was an old sedan that somebody turned into a convertible that'd make a cool little jalopy rat rod type thing though <laughs> check that out that's pretty neat right there got a tag on it whatever was on that tag is long gone though so once again if you know what it is let me know And we made it out here last night it was so late I just went ahead and took it home I didn't feel like coming out here and unloading it in the pitch black 
But I'm going to get it all unchained now. Get my bungee off of it. And I've got some pretty exciting stuff going on today, but I guess that'll be a separate video. One thing I did notice on this car is that it has a 67 front clip. There's no marker lights, and then it's got the 67 grill in it and the emblem and all that. And the bumper and all that. So somebody has done some swapping around on this car. So I can't quite tell what year it is for sure. The front clips on these cars interchange with each other. That's not a big deal. The biggest difference is, is there's marker lights on 68 and newer. And then the grill is totally different. On a 68 Thunderbird, they had emblems in the headlight covers right here. And then on a 69 Thunderbird, instead of having this great big bird like this, they had a smaller one and it had little blue uh, jewels in it instead. See, that's hard telling exactly what they've done with this car. But one thing I did just notice, you can't really tell very good in this. I can't get the door open all the way, but uh, this has an AM FM 8 track in it, which is pretty cool. Now, if this was a 67, that would be like a $500 piece because those are super rare and they interchange with the Mustang. But being a 68 or newer, you can kind of see the knobs right beside each other and those will only fit in a Thunderbird. But it's still a pretty rare piece and it's probably worth quite a bit of money. If I do decide to bury this car halfway on the ground or do something crazy with it like I'm thinking, then uh, I'll probably go ahead and pull all the valuable parts off of it. Stuff like the steering column, all the dash parts, radio, all that sort of stuff. Any good chrome, things like that that don't really matter for what I want to do with it. I'll pull all that off, make sure that gets saved. All four wheels were locked up on this car, locked up tight, so I don't know if that rear end's worth saving. If I kind of look at it now, it kind of looks like it was buried down in the mud for a long time. And so that rear end may just be junk, so I may or may not pull it out. But we'll see. For now, I'm going to get it unloaded. I think the loader's about warmed up. Set it off to the side, grab that front clip off of it, set it off to the side. And I'm going to get busy with today's agenda. What I'll be doing today is actually going through and getting all those cars out of that place that you saw at the beginning of the video. But that's going to be a totally separate video. And honestly, that probably, since my videos are a little bit out of order right now, may not come out for a little while. So stay tuned. I have no clue when I'm going to release it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I know I had a ton of fun. Me and my dad went out there and got that car. And it was just a nice, relaxing adventure. Nice, easy roads. Not too much traffic. As always, stay tuned for the next adventure. I have no clue what's happening next. Remember to check out Upside. Use my code ADVENTURE. You can get back an extra 25 cents. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there and find yourself an adventure because there's all sorts of adventures out there that are just waiting for you. We'll see you next time.